Hey guys, welcome back to the final episode, if I can say that, of the Eastman's Act series. It has been a long, long journey of almost one year now, but finally we have come to the end of this series and this video is the last video of the series, believe it or not. So today we'll be covering section 59, 60, 61, 62, 63 and 64 and after that we'll be spending some time understanding the difference in essence between a license and an easement and a license and a lease. So if you have been with me in this journey from the beginning or if you have joined in the middle or if this video is your first video, whatever it may be, let's begin today's video, shall we? Hey guys, my name is Akash, I'm a 4th year law student in South Calcutta Law College and you are watching Lawbit. Alright, so section 59. When a grantor transfers the property under the license, the transferee is not bound to honor that license or is not bound by that license. So suppose A has a property and he allows B to do something in his property. Now after some time A transfers the property to C. Now C will not be bound to honor the license or not be bound to allow B to do the thing that he was doing on A's land. He can revoke the license if he wants to. Now this again emphasizes the very personal nature of a license. Now do you remember in the previous video I said that a license is neither transferable nor heritable at the end of the license. Now we can see that it is neither transferable or heritable at the end of the licensor as well. So this emphasizes the very personal nature of a license which exists only between the grantor and the grantee and when they transfer the property that right does not get transferred to the transferee as well. The transferee is not bound to honor that particular license. The transferee can choose to revoke the license when he gets uh, interest or gets ownership of that property unless that license is of an irrevocable nature. I hear you. What are licenses of irrevocable nature? That's exactly what we're going to see in section 60. So according to section 60, a grantor can revoke a license unless the license is coupled with a transfer of property and such transfer of property is in force or the second condition is that the licensee working upon that license has executed a work of permanent nature on that land and has incurred some expenses. So licenses in general are revocable in nature. The grantor can revoke the license anytime after giving proper notice to the license unless it is irrevocable under these two scenarios. So let's understand scenario number one. In 1915, there was a case called Pratap Singh versus Dhum Singh. The facts of the case was that Pratap Singh's predecessor in interest in the land which now belonged to Pratap Singh allowed some villagers from a particular village to cut firewood from his land. The word predecessor in interest means the previous owners. Like the Pratap Singh is now the owner of the land, the previous owners allowed the villagers to cut firewood from that particular from that particular land. Now Pratap Singh, when he became the owner of the land, he filed a suit for perpetual injunction to restrain the villagers from cutting firewood from his land. The logic pushed forward was that since a transferee is not bound to honor the license granted by the previous owner, so he is very much entitled in this case to revoke that particular license. Now, the thing you need to understand here is that in this particular case, a transfer of property is coupled with the license. The villagers are cutting the firewood from the land of the grantor and taking it away. The firewood are cut from trees that are planted in the grantor's land and, and hence are properties of the grantor. And when the villagers are cutting it and taking it away, a transfer of property is taking place and hence the court found out that this perfectly satisfied the exception of section 60 and the license cannot be revoked. Okay, now the second exception. If the licensee working upon the license has executed some sort of permanent work on the property and has incurred some license, the license becomes irrevocable. Now this section is basically based on the principle of justice and equity. Suppose I have given you the license to build a small house in my land and reside there. 
and acting upon that license you have constructed or started construction of a house in my land you have incurred expense you have incurred time you have invested time now after some days i come and say bro i revoked the license that i have given you i'm giving you a notice period of 2 weeks leave my land now as i said you have invested time you have invested money and your time and your money should not be subjected to my whim and to protect you from that to protect you from that whim once you have invested time and invested money and started working and made some construction of a permanent nature on a property acting upon a license the license becomes irrevocable now the question as to whether a work is of permanent nature or not that will depend on the facts and circumstances of a particular case and the court will decide on that if the work is of permanent nature or not the court will decide on that when such case comes in front of it now section 61 revocation can be both express or implied so nothing really to explain in this section there are two explanations in the bear act read them should be very easy to understand should be a piece of cake let's move on to the next section that actually does need some explanation section 62 so when will a license be deemed to be revoked that is when will we understand that the license has been revoked under what scenarios will we understand that the license has been revoked well there are nine such scenarios clause a c when a grantor transfers the property under the license to another person the transferee is not bound to honor that particular license you know that right now understand that in such a case the license is not de facto revoked that is whenever the transfer takes place the license does not get revoked automatically the transferee has an option to keep the license alive or revoke it it is up to him it is up to his discretion the license does not get automatically revoked when the transfer takes place but and here in comes clause a of section 62 when due to a clause preceding the grant of the license the interest of the grantor ceases to exist on that particular property the license is automatically revoked the license is deemed to be revoked so when for a reason that existed prior to the granting of the license the interest of the grantor on the property under license is extinguished the license is de facto cancelled the license is de facto revoked let me give you an example suppose a has a lease on a property for 20 years now after 10 years a grants b the license to do something on his property the property that he has leased for 20 years now after 10 years of the granting of the license that is after the completion of 20 years of the lease period when a's right over that particular property will come to an end the license will automatically get revoked because the termination of interest of a on that property is because of a clause or because of a reason that is prior to the granting of the license the reason the clause for which the right is getting ended is because of that lease agreement that was done 20 years ago that said that after 20 years the right of a on that property will end and the license was only granted 10 years after that and so when after 10 more years the right of a gets terminated on that property the license gets automatically revoked okay clause c when a license is granted for a limited period it will be deemed to be over once that limited period is over or and this is the tougher part when it has been made contingent on a condition that is the a condition has been placed that the license will come to an end on the performance or non performance of a particular act the license will be deemed to have ended once that condition is fulfilled so for example if a grants b the license to fish in his pond as long as b stays sober the license will come to an end the license will deem to have been revoked once b loses his sobriety clear clause a so when a license has been granted for a particular purpose the license will be deemed to have been revoked when that purpose is accomplished or abandoned or becomes impractical 
So suppose if I have granted you a license to take bricks from my land for a construction that you are doing, when that construction is complete or when you stop pursuing that construction completely permanently or when that construction becomes impracticable, say suppose because uh, such construction was rendered illegal by some law that was enforced at that time, the license will be deemed to have been revoked. Alright, now section 63 notice period. So whenever a license is revoked by the grantor, the licensee is entitled to get a reasonable time to leave the property and remove any goods that he was allowed to keep on that property under the license. Now, what is a reasonable time is really a question of fact and has to be decided from case to case by the courts after examining the facts and circumstances of that particular case. For example, if the license was to keep brick on a particular person's land, then a notice period of one week might be enough to remove all the bricks from that land. But if the license was to, was to stay in someone's land, the license was granted to a person to stay on someone's land, then a notice period of one week might not be enough for that person to, to shift from that land because now he also needs to find another place to live which may not be that easy to find. So in this particular case, a notice of one week might not be enough though a notice of one week was enough when it was time to remove bricks from that particular land. So it really depends on the facts and circumstances of the case that what is a reasonable time but Whatever the case is, whatever the situation is, a reasonable time for that particular situation needs to be given by the grantor to the licensee, to the grantee before he can revoke the license by his power of revocation. Okay, so the last section of the Act, Section 64. So when a license is granted against a consideration and that license is revoked without any fault of the licensee before he can fully enjoy the license, he is entitled to compensation from the grantor. Now, for example, suppose you grant me a license to dump my raw materials in your land for a construction that I am doing in my land nearby. Now, for this license, I pay you as a consideration a sum of 5,000 rupees. Now, halfway through the construction, you give me a notice to vacate your land, to vacate your ground and to remove all my raw materials from your ground. You revoke the license that you have granted to me. Now, since a license is a revocable right, I will have to vacate your ground. But because I paid a consideration for that particular license and I was not fully able to enjoy that license because my construction was not fully done, I will be entitled to file a suit against you and get compensation from you. All right, so that's it for the sections of the act. Finally, we're done with that. But as I promised, I will now try to explain the differences between a license and an easement and a license and a lease. First off, a license and an easement. The main difference in essence between an easement and a license is that in case of an easement, two heritages, two immovable properties are required. The dominant one and the servant one. Easement right is enjoyed by whoever is the owner or is in possession of the dominant heritage. On the other hand, a license is a very, very personal right granted to one or more persons to do something on the grantor's property, on the grantor's land, which in absence of such license would be considered illegal. There needs to be no property attached to the persons, to the grantee, to the licensee for a license to exist. And he can also not transfer the license to any other person generally. An easement right, if you remember, exists for the beneficial enjoyment of the dominant heritage. But in case of a license, there is no such stipulation. The right is conferred for the personal benefit of the licensee and is limited to him only. This is the main difference, the difference in essence between an easement and a license and all other differences that you can find in any other book of of Ismail's Act on Ismail's Act are byproducts of this difference. In the comment and I will positively answer you. Now let's understand the difference again in essence between a license and a lease. Very simple actually. 
exclusivity if the effect of an agreement is to give exclusive possession to the grantee subject to some restrictions then it is a lease whereas if the effect of the agreement is to allow one or more persons to do something on the grantor's property which without such uh, express permission would have been illegal it will be a license understand that the property here in itself remains in possession of the grantor and moreover it needs not to be exclusive on a single property multiple licenses can be granted to multiple people either for the same purpose or for different purposes but the same property can never be leased to two different people that can never happen so again the difference in essence between a license and the lease is the exclusivity factor and every other difference that you can find in any textbook on easements act are by products of this particular difference and again i will not be covering them any doubt shoot them down in a comment and i will positively answer them and with that we have come to the end of this video and this series and voila we are done can you believe it feels like the end of a long journey Anyhow, here are my social media handles. They will also be linked below in the description and in the pinned comments. So go there to join me in my journey. And from the next video, we'll start another series. I'm thinking maybe partnership or contract, contract act, partnership act, or anything in the realm of mercantile law. But please, please do tell me what you want to see in this channel moving forward. Hoping to hear from you. And guys, always remember that. A dream is not what you see in sleep. It's something that doesn't let you sleep. Check out the whole Ismail Tax series here and some of my other videos here. And guys, stay healthy. Wear a mask.